tomorrow night. Rangers, Astros. But first, it's time to stroll down American League Game 7 memory lane. And we can't think of a better show to help you than your North Texas baseball show of record, the KNC Masterpiece on the fan. Take it away, boys. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan, the official North Texas baseball show of record on the official home of your world champion Texas Rangers. You're about to get Rangers Astros action, which you can also hear right here on The Fan. But before we get into any of that, let's reflect on the greatest triumph that the Rangers had last year. Now, I know you're thinking the Diamondbacks in the World Series, and you might have some validity to that. But I want to take you guys back to October 23rd. 2023, Game 7 of the ALCS between the Rangers and the Astros. We're going to get into the game. We're going to break down some things. We want to hear from you guys how you were feeling during all of this. But how were y'all feeling going into this game? Mike, I remember thinking to myself, we have Max Scherzer on the hill, and I'm really excited about that. But I was also both terrified and excited because Max Scherzer was not Max Scherzer but I also I felt very comfortable knowing that I had a veteran like that on the mound. I was nervous, and for some reason in these situations, I think about how I'm going to feel if my team loses, and I really don't want to feel that way. So it's <laughs> yes. so exciting to get Game 6. You weren't really expected to get that game after the Game 5 loss when Altuve hit the home run. So I remember being excited but really nervous, and I just didn't want to have that empty feeling of losing a Game 7. I've always, I did feel like the Astros felt like they couldn't hit in their park, and I love the fact that the Rangers got to be the first ones up to the plate because they were going to be the ones that got to set the tone. You you, you just brought something up there. I'm really curious. I want to take a step back. After Game 5, it was obviously a crushing loss in the ALCS. Did you think it was over? Because, you know, the Rangers had won the first two games, and then you're like, oh, we're coming home, party, rock and roll. And then you lose game five in just terrible fashion. Did you think that was a wrap for the series? I kind of, I, I was pretty worried. I was at game five, first row, right where the Rangers on deck circle was. It was amazing being there, and I remember walking out of that stadium going, I might have just seen the best game I'll ever see in my life. I hated that the Rangers lost. But yes, walking to the car, I just thought to myself, in a similar fashion, being a DFW sports fan, when the Mavericks lost Game 5 in 2006 against the Miami Heat, it's probably over. They've they've taken all the momentum. They're going back to Houston. It was great making it this far, but dang it, the Astros are the Astros. They're the defending champs, and they just took it to us for three straight in Arlington so I felt like, yes, the Astros were probably going to win game six. I, I don't know, Kevin. I just, I never, maybe it's the forever optimist in me. I never felt like. It was like, just three to two Yeah, still. I never felt like the Rangers were out of it in any way, shape, or form. There were just a lot of ifs. If Evaldi can this. If Montgomery can this. And you know how we feel. Whenever we have a list that long, we're a little nervous. Now, when you got to game seven of the ALCS, I get it. Game seven is as dramatic as it could get. The thing that I loved about the way this game played out is I went into it with those same feelings that Mike had. I was like, oh, no, what if we lose? God, we're never going to hear the end of this. They're going to Astros fans. We got the World Series. eh? We just knocked you guys up. Blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Would they win another World Series? And it was like never going to end. One thing I loved about this game, it was an ass kicking from pretty much the word go. Yes, right out of the gate, Kevin. I think there was a 1-0 fastball right there for Corey Seager, and he drives one for a home run to set everybody up 1-0. Hold on, are you talking about Corey Seager's home run? Here's the 1-0 pitch to Seager. A swing and a high drive, well hit right field. That has hit a mile. That ball is history. A mammoth home run for Corey Seager into the upper deck. And the Rangers grab a 1-0 lead in the top of the first. All right, so it's 1-0, but you know what, Corey? I'm greedy. Not good enough. Javier, a long hold. There goes the runner. The pitch swung on and missed. The throw to second base, and Carter dives in safely. A head first dive. He just outran the throw. And Evan Carter picks up the stolen base, his third of the postseason. This is the time where I assume, Mike, you want to point out that Evan Carter also stole second base, and that was really important. And also, I think he got a 3-2 count to get a walk there, too. So that's Look, enough. he's <laughs> awesome. I don't dispute that. And then his catch earlier in the season, uh, early in the series, was freaking incredible this is where you're just like i love this team Mm -hmm. i love Corey seager 
Evan Carter is doing it again in the biggest moment. He's handling this moment like he's a veteran. And, yes, scoring early in this game just made you feel so much better about the chances of the Texas Rangers. Here's the set by Javier and the payoff pitch. And Adolis hits a high drive to deep left field. Going back is Brantley. He turns. He looks. That is off the wall. It's in play. Carter heading home. Adolis thought it was a home run. He only gets to first base. And the Rangers lead 2 to nothing on a single by Garcia off the wall in front of the Crawford boxes. You pop it up to 2 to nothing. You get it up to 3 to nothing. Two balls, two strikes, the count. Jonah Heim on deck. And here's the pitch. Garver swings and lobs one in the air. Short left center field. Coming on hard is McCormick. Diving from left is Brantley, and it's in and out of Brantley's glove. Adolis around 30. He's heading home. Here's the throw to the plate. It is cut off. Into second base goes Garver, and it's 3 nothing Rangers in the first. I know it's just the first inning. Confidence level, having Scherzer in Game 7, picking up a 3-0 lead. Actually, hold on to the thought about answering that question. Mike, I'm hoping you can walk me through it. I realize playoffs is a totally different deal, but how much easier does it make you feel when you go up 3 nothing before you even have to take the hill? Well, it gives you a lot of confidence, and now... Not that you're changing your game plan this quickly because it is just the start of the game. So it's not like, hey, I can now be more aggressive. That kind of happens more in the sixth, seventh inning if you're up by three or more runs that you definitely don't want to walk, guys. You have this feeling and this sense of, okay, execute the game plan and my guys are scoring runs today. So you feel more confident that it's not going to be goose egg versus goose egg where you're going to have to match zeros you know in this first inning man if i can put a zero on the board even more pressure on the other team now unfortunately that was when altuve stepped up and i was like oh crap i think the roof's gonna get blown off on this sucker is it make it worse that it was him i realized yes. all the runs count the same <laughs> yes but it just that makes it worse right? yeah but uh, you know the big factor there kevin that really did help out is that you know your defense is there. Simeon turns a double plate in the inning. The Rangers are up 3-1. And I think one of the calling cards of this Rangers team all year was their defensive play. They have two great up the middle. And again, I point out the other day on the show, they only had five errors in the entire run to the, through the playoffs. Zero, I think, in the World Series. But they only had five errors, and they had tremendous defensive plays one after another in this game. I can remember after the great double play, but after the first inning was over, both teams had hit. Obviously, the Rangers took advantage of their threat more than the Astros did. I thought we were in for a 12-10 to 10 ball game. It just kind of, after that first inning, I remember going, oh my gosh, am I going to be watching a college World Series game over a Major League ALCS Game 7? That's just the analogy I was thinking of. Either College World Series or game three in the best of three high school series, like baseball wise, where you'd burned out your pitchers yeah. and you're like, hey, we're going to hodgepodge this whole thing together. It's going to be a lot of runs. I-, I think that's very fair. But you did just bring up an important play right there because it's looking like potentially in the bottom of the first, it could be worse after Altuve scored, Abreu on first, Alvarez on third, and then you got this. The pitch to Brantley, swung on, double play ball to second. Out at second, out at first. Simeon to Seager to low, and Scherzer gets out of the inning as Brantley goes after the first pitch of the at-bat. So as you brought up, you get out unscathed, 3-1, to one, but real question, and I know it all worked out, and I'm super pumped about that. How, how are you feeling about Scherzer then? Okay. Not feeling like he's quite in his bag, yeah. but also knowing that he's good enough. And uh, I think somewhere in the second inning, he caved Maldonado, uh, Candy Maldonado, as Mike likes to say. Still, out. That's still not, it's uh, still not Candy he looked Maldonado. Like, he looked like he candied something out there. But the, the it, it was it was one of those moments where you're like, I think this is a pitcher that's on the mound right now that really knows he has a defense behind him. He knows he has fast outfielders to go make plays in the outfield, and he knows he has sure-handed infielders to make plays. All he has to do is go up there and give his best that he can, and maybe maybe he does get the right hitter like Maldonado to take down. Well, since you brought it up, I'm going to assume, but would you rather right here we clown on Jeremy Pena or Martin Maldonado? Why not both? The 2-2. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Fastball up and in. Takes care of Pena for the second out. It's Scherzer's first strikeout. Scherzer 
ready with the 0-2. And here it is. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Another punchy cut here at a slider. And Maldonado is out on strikes. Just want to point out in my notes, Kevin, I wrote Maldonado. So I just, I don't know why I did that. Huh. So in y'all's combined mind, Candy Maldonado Maldonado Mm -hmm. is who we saw. And that's who he'll forever be. Okay. Well, I will say having a guy like Max Scherzer bounce back in the second inning made me think, okay, as nervous as that first inning was after scoring three and, and, and having a rough inning there, like, okay, this is a veteran guy. He wants the ball. He wants this situation. And I feel more confident after the second inning that he could maybe give us five innings. Let me ask you a quick question to go along with that, both of y'all. How, how did you watch this game? Like, were you with a whole bunch of people? Not with your eyes, eyes, Mike. Yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> with your eyes. That was my fault. What was? The, what were the surroundings? Mm-hmm. Because I've ta- we talked about this a lot before. I don't always love watching big-time sports with that I'm very invested in with people around because I get very angry. Were you all with your family? Were you off by yourself? I was alone for the majority of it, and then my wife came to sit next to me, and I said no. And I told her to slide to the end of the couch because that's where she spent most of the series, most of the other series okay. at was the other end of the couch. So she was upset that she couldn't sit close to me. I was at Bally Sports Southwest Studios standing up uh, watching the game. I would like to say I was sitting down, but most of the time I was standing up and, and cheering like I was a little kid uh, along with Leslie McCaslin and Steve Bouchel. So it was a blast getting to watch the game with one of uh, what I consider a great former Texas Ranger that I grew up in love with. I I watched it with Jess and Noah, and it was great because Jess had a different, like, baseball onesie for Noah. It felt like every single game day. and But we quickly weeded out. the Games three through five is like, nope. Did y'all wear matching onesies? Uh, we did not. Oh. At least that's what I'm going to tell you. How would you ever know the difference? We got rid of the ones that didn't work in game three, four, five. And so he definitely stayed up a little later than usual. Not that he was like locked in on what was happening in the game, but we got so caught up in the game. And then the way Jess caught the enthusiasm for what was going on, it was really awesome. And I I loved watching it with her. And she also knew that I might get mad or swear or punch at the table or something like that. Oh, I thought you were I was going to say a desk, and I was like, I don't have a desk okay, in the living room. Yeah, that's probably no, good. just the table. You know where you kind of get that, come on, mm-hmm. what are we even doing here? I absolutely do. That, okay, good. I, if you said no, I was going to feel like a rageaholic or something like that. <laughs> say it, Mike. What are we even doing here? <laughs> <laughs> what are we even doing here? Is that we're your... playing baseball. Yeah, okay. Playing... <laughs> that, I, here's what I want to know. It, it's for y'all, for the folks listening. We're going to pick this up on the other side. What is your go-to like phrase of frustration or anger? Because I guess the what are we even doing here? here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The most sanitized version that you can. Look, the good news is you know this game is going to turn out well. But let's when we come back, let's get back to Adolis Garcia crushing the Astros like he did all series long. We'll do that next right here on 105 Through the Fan. We're back. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. We're going through some of the responses, Corey, for people's go-to lines of frustration. And as you kind of predicted, many of them not suitable for air. Have you come back? with a new phrase mm-hmm. as we deconstruct Game 7 of the ALCS. What from the last- f- Oh, my gosh! That is not clean for air. Going to have to beep that one. Well, who are you talking to? Mm, I don't know. You're going to have to beep that one. All right. Have you come up with a more, more suitable for air? No. No, okay. I can't. I don't, uh, nope, that's the only one. Mike. Yes. Did, did you swear, <laughs> regardless of who's around you, if you get really frustrated at a sporting event, or do you... Try to clean it up if the boys are around or they know the deal. I don't think I've sweared yet. So <laughs> mm-hmm. it's going to happen know, soon. I, I unfortunately can go right back into baseball potty terms very quickly. <laughs> okay. I like that description. All right. Get to the third, three to one. I know this is easy because they won the ALCS and he was the ALCS MVP, but. Adolis Garcia, it felt like he dominated every second of every inning of this series. Do you ever it, think, Corey, 
Why do they keep throwing him strikes? Okay, this was the I thing, too. I, I distinctly remember this. They painted two fastballs on the corner to him in this at bat. All right? And then they threw the exact same pitch in the exact same spot. And that's what, it, like, Adolis is not good. You're not going to... You're not going to trick him like that. There's, I mean, why would you even do something like that? Why would you throw this guy a strike? He had proven throughout the whole series that he will swing at balls, especially in Game 6. Mm-hmm. And so I was just surprised in Game 7 that they were somewhat challenging him. Yeah. That why not walk him? Now, I get you have to face other guys in the lineup, and it's a good lineup, but I just was surprised at this point. Why are they trying to get him out with strikes? And then I thought to myself, I need some of those rainbow sherbet shoes. Oh man, those shoes are amazing. They and, they really are. And why do you guys say all that? Did did something bad happen when they threw him a strike? Here comes Brown. And that ball was hit high and deep down the right field line. Tucker looking. It is gone. Inside the right field foul pole. An opposite field home run for Adolis Garcia. The home run streak stretches to four. The Rangers lead four to one. All right, so we're all pumped. We're all Rangers happy. This, to me, is the diciest part of the game, though. Because from here, it's just going to be a giant party. You go into the bottom of the third. Yes. It looked like in the second inning, like you guys were talking about, it looked like Scherzer was rocking and rolling. He got those two strikeouts to wrap up the second. You have now extended the lead to four to one, and I'm thinking, holy crap, is this the I ain't as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was moment, and you're going to get seven innings of lockdown Scherzer from here. It fell apart pretty quickly. Now, I know we can focus on the Bregman home run, but it was immediately after that. It was Jordan Alvarez right after that following the home run with the trip. Infield playing Alvarez to pull. Scherzer again with the two-strike offering, and it's lifted high into the air, pretty deep left field. Carter going back, now running along the track. He leaps, can't make the play. It's off the scoreboard. It kicks back toward the diamond. Alvarez digging for third. Here comes the throw. It's offline. Jordan Alvarez has tripled off the out-of-town scoreboard. I really think this is a – you got your dead on. This is so important to this game because Bregman's home run there, Kevin, was – was a moment where you're like, oh no. And yes. I was but I was thinking to myself, this is all they have. I remember like specifically thinking they have Bregman, they have Alvarez. That's a tough part. I know they have Altuve too, but that's it. They don't have what we have in our lineup. Yep. And so I was a little nervous about that. But the most important part about the Alvarez moment, Kevin, is that he gets to third base on that triple, but does he ever score? That's huge, and I want to. I will explain why later on. You're absolutely right about that. Just in my mind, it's DefCon one or five, oh. whatever, whatever the bad the one highest. is. <laughs> I'm sure they're all bad to a certain degree, but whatever the worst version is, because now Abreu's popping up to the plate. You've already seen him drive a run in. It's four to two, and I'm wondering what the rest of the day is going to look like for Scherzer. To your point, I'm thinking well. Why would I ever think this was going to be easy? Now, yes. about 5 to 15 minutes later, I'm thinking, oh, wow, it might be easy. Yes. But in this moment, I'm thinking, oh, no, this is going to be a battle, and, and maybe the Astros are going to be able to tie this up pretty quickly, and we're just going to be in one of those offensive battles all night long. But one thing I think that, you know, Bochi knew that we, you know, we kind of knew, but he knew when he would is that he had Jordan Montgomery to go to if ever there was a necessary moment. I'll admit, once again, I would not have thought it would have come this early. And if you would have said, Jordan Montgomery is going to come in into the bottom in the bottom of the third inning, my immediate thought would we're have been, trouble. we're going to lose. <laughs> yeah. Don't you yes. don't you think that is a reasonable yes. takeaway? Yes, except for except for that he had been Jordan Montgomery through the playoffs. Like that's True. all I can say. Long hold here by Montgomery in the 1-0 pinch. Swing and a line drive caught by Seeger. A little bit of a leap. He really didn't need to jump. He went up just in case he needed that height, but the ball goes into his glove off his left shoulder and Montgomery gets the out. But yes, I agree with you. And instead he comes in, you you get out of the inning un scathed and I want to skip ahead then to I think this is going to have to go down as one of the most glorious innings in Texas Rangers history I, I there 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 is a lot 
that went into this postseason. And you can probably point out any number of different innings, but this right here is where you just broke the whole thing wide open. And unfortunately, we're just talking not to mix in too much of what's happening right here and right now, but the guy who got it started is unfortunately the guy who we just saw leave because of injury. Here's the pitch. Swung on, and that's lined to left to base hit. Over the head of Pena, as Josh Young appeared to hit that one right off the end of the bat. And he is aboard to start the Ranger fourth. All right, so Josh Young gets going. Simeon walks. Seager gets on base. But Seager hits one so hard, I thought he was going to take Abreu's hand off yeah. on this one, dude. It was, <laughs> I mean, he ripped that thing the way we've seen Corey Seager do. France dealing 0-1. Here it comes. Curveball, and that's smashed off the glove of a diving Abreu. It rolls over to Altuve, but not in time to make a play. Abreu diving to his right, deflected that ball. He kept it out of right field and probably saved a run. But that is a hit for Corey Seager, who now is just a triple shy of the cycle. And the Rangers have the bases loaded with one out for Evan Carter. I'm going to specifically go to you here, Mike. Yes. The bases are loaded with Rangers. It's 4-2 to two in the game to go to the World Series. I know your primary focus is, I want us to win the game. But when it's Evan Carter stepping up to the plate, does that take on like extra excitement or you're like, I couldn't possibly be more excited than I am right now. No, I'm super excited. And I'm thinking if they don't throw him strikes, it's a free run because he's not going to swing at balls. Uh, And he does just such a tremendous job of just staying back just enough. And you're trying to think no matter what, how many balls he takes, you're just thinking on the mound this young guy's going to maybe overswing or be too aggressive in this situation and throwing soft rather than throwing your your best fastball is probably going to be the way to go. And it didn't matter. Carter was able to stay back just enough. The pitch to Carter. Swung on and lined down the right field line. Hooking. Fair. It lands right on the chalk. One run is home. Two runs are home. The Rangers lead it by the score of 6-2. to two. Seager ends up at third. Carter at second on a two-run double. Y'all's immediate reaction, we still got amazing parts of this inning to go, but 6-2, did you think, okay, exhale, or are you like, no, no, no. Pedal I, down. I, yeah, okay. Pedal okay. down, man. All right. I wanted to embarrass Houston. All right, so maybe. Are you embarrassed? <laughs> I mean, you know who's really right. embarrassed is those two nimrods in the space suit as they saw this all spiral out of control in game So seven. I can remember throughout the playoffs, I don't know why I went to the Karate Kid so much. Okay. But there were plenty of times when a Ranger was on the mound or in these situations where you could kind of put the game out of hand and I would just go into my Cobra Kai and I would scream loud, Finish him! <laughs> and so that's what I'm thinking. After Carter's double, I'm thinking there's an opportunity here to open this game up so much, and the Dolis is up to bat, and I'm thinking, finish him! 2-0, and oh, Adoli swings, hits a ground ball through the left side. It's a base hit. One run home, and here comes Carter to the plate. He will score. It is 8-2, to two, Texas. And Adolis Garcia has a new American League Championship Series record for RBIs. How about that? 14 of them for Adolis. Evan Carter scores from second base. All right, like that's, this is what I was pointing out. Alvarez in the previous inning couldn't score from third, but because of the speed of Evan Carter, he's able to score from second that puts you at eight to two. And Kevin, like you were saying with Adolis Garcia there, Three for three at this point, four RBI in the fourth. Like all in the fourth, he already has driven in four runs. It's spectacular. This is the part, and this is a glorious inning. And the Rangers score four runs. This inning is what wins the game for them. And I can look back at that now and say, this is the inning that won them the game. This is the inning that got them into the World Series, et cetera, et cetera. But when Heim gets the single. Two and one. And there's a line shot into right. That's a solid base hit for Heim. That'll send Adolis over to third base as Tucker fires into second. And the Rangers have runners at the corners. Nathaniel Lowe coming up and Dusty Baker coming up the dugout steps. And so you got him and Adolis on the corners. The Astros have to make a pitching change. And then Nate Lowe gets a walk and the bases are loaded. I realize 
that I know it's not uber positive. This is Josh Young. Here's the pitch. Young swings. It's a ground ball. Deep short. Backhanded by Pena. Long throw to first base, and he got him. Outstanding play by Jeremy Pena from deep in the hole to throw out Josh Young and end the inning, but not before the Rangers come up with four runs in the inning on four hits. They leave him loaded, and in the middle of the fourth, it's eight to two Rangers. And so you end up getting the ground out there, and you leave the bases loaded, I do believe. I felt some frustration. I know looking back on it, you can be like, that's absurd. You're ahead of eight to two, and you mm-hmm. just scored four runs. But I was to the Mike school of thought. I might not have been yelling fish, finish him just the same way, but I was thinking, like, let's get another hit. Let's have it up a 10 now. Like, is do you think that's a fair, like, fan mindset? Because from a game mindset, that inning was glorious. But I, w- I was, like, a little frustrated that we couldn't finish it off with bases loaded. I understand where you're coming from, but to score four in the inning, and yes, you want with the bases loaded, sure. you want more. But I was, at the end of that inning, I'm clapping and I'm thinking, we have them on the ropes. And I know it's still early in the game, but I'm thinking we're close to putting the nail in the coffin in their dugout. And I know sometimes people don't really believe in momentum, but I was in a belief system there of if you can get a zero on the board at eight to two, if Montgomery can go out there and get a zero on the board, I think it's totally devastating to their morale in the Houston Astros dugout. And I'm glad that you said that because Montgomery did put a zero on the board, but you know what? We've got to get to, I think it was the next inning. It was the bottom of the fifth and the top of the sixth. This is when the game was over, and it brings up what you were talking about with Montgomery again. Let's dive into that. We will begin, or I guess continue, the celebration. The Rangers, spoiler alert, they're going to win this game 11-4 to to advance to the third World Series in franchise history. But coming up next, let's just focus on the bottom of the fifth, top of the sixth, and then we'll get to partying because... This thing is almost over. We'll do that next right here on 105 through the fan. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 through the fan. We're getting you ready for Astros Rangers, which starts tomorrow right here on 105 through the fan. You can hear all those games, as all the Rangers games you can, on your home of the Rangers. The world champion Rangers, 105 through the fan. We've kind of been like reminiscing through game seven of the ALCS. In some ways, felt a little bit bigger than the World Series games. I realized. You might be like, well, not really, because I needed to win the World Series. But with a rival going to Game 7 and everything, Jordan Montgomery gets you through the fifth. Another clean inning, baby. Exactly. And the fourth might have, if I remember correctly, a little bit more stressful than the fifth inning. But the point is, you get the zero, like Mike said, you get it again. You roll into the sixth. And this is where the game is over. I know they keep competing I clearly said the astronaut fans that uh-huh. were sitting in the stands, they had given up for Houston, but they probably paid a lot for their tickets, so they kept sitting there. And it was a back-to-back combination, starting with Mitch Garver having to wear one to get on base. The 1-0 pitch, that hit him. Boy, it got him on the ribs. So Abreu, with a fastball, plunks Mitch Garver here, and Mitch is still in the box. That didn't hit Mitch where he hit a Dolis. He hit a Dolis in the bulky part of the left arm between the elbow and the shoulder, but here Mitch tries to get out of the way and it catches him in the ribs, and he is still squatting right over home plate. Now, in just a minute, Corey, I know we'll get to the receipt of that, which is one of your favorite parts of the game. But right here, this is this is the moment. This is the moment where, to me, I know you still got to play. It's over. And the Rangers, I finally can tell myself, They're going to the World Series. The 3-1. And that ball is hit high and deep into right field. Tucker going back. He's at the wall. He leaps. And it is gone. Nathaniel Lowe with a two-run home run. He puts Texas into double figures. It's 10-2. Dude, on that one right there, Kyle Tucker, who I feel like is a nuisance to Rangers fans during the regular season. He struggled a lot during the series. And had a couple of these home runs hit over his head. On this one, the ball hits the tip of his glove. He looks like he hurts himself driving into the wall, but then he gets to the bottom of the wall and he just sits there depressed. That's the you were talking about those those fans, the astronaut fans. He looked like one of the astronaut fans out there. He did, he did. Mike, at ten to two, are you able to say that's a wrap, or you've seen too much to take anything for granted at this level? I'm feeling great. 
I understand that they can have a rally, and I understand that the Rangers' bullpen depth in the playoffs wasn't great. No. But I was feeling pretty confident at this point that Houston, in a way, was kind of conceding at this point. Okay. Yeah, they're going to try to have great at best. They're going to try to put zeros on the board. But I, I didn't see a comeback happening. They were all trying to hit six-run home runs with nobody on up at the plate each time. Well, and honestly, that's what made – I got I to gotta do one more because we're going to play a highlight in just a second. This felt like an actual curtain call. In my mind, the game's over. It feels like the Astros have conceded. But if you wanted somebody to take a bow as if Adolis Garcia hadn't already won the award and punched the Rangers ticket to the World Series, this is adding insult to injury, I do believe. And the pitch swung on in a high fly ball hit to left field. This is deep. Back is Brantley at the wall. He's looking up, and that ball is history. It just barely makes it into the Crawford boxes. A two-home run game for Adolis Garcia. That was a moonshot. 15 RBIs in this series for Adolis. It's 11-3, Texas. That was the second one of the game, Kevin. The fifth one of the series. And as he rounded third base on that, he gets to the third base section where a bunch of Rangers fans are. And you can take it one of two ways. Either he was putting his hand up to his ear like Hulk Hogan right. because he was saying, Rangers fans, I hear you. What about now, brother? Or he was putting his ear up saying, Houston fans, I do not hear you right now. And as much as I love that Corey was at the bottom of the eighth with McCormick, where you get the receipt for Garver getting hit, was that like one of your low-key favorite moments of the game? Yeah, it it was because, and Mike describes this so much better than me, so Mike... If you can, this is a guy that he he knows he doesn't have to see Houston again after this one. And so he just says, you know what? I throw really hard. You're wearing it. Yeah, and the situation presented itself where you're not going to be hurt by putting a guy on base. There is a penalty for hitting a person. They do get to go to first yeah. base. And at this point where the score is at, how many outs there are, I believe there's two outs in the inning. Uh, so you know that. You know, I just oh. need to get one more out, and the inning is over. And it's still payback for Adolis Garcia in Game Five when they and that was intentional when Abreu hit him. So this is the moment where you can hit somebody. There was as, one out at that point, but I get your point nonetheless. Yeah, yeah you're just looking for the moment where you're like, this isn't going to hurt me because uh, it is a playoff game. The last thing you want is, hey, I really want to hit somebody, and then we end up losing the game because you wanted to get revenge. There was another Adolis moment in this inning, though, Kevin, because the final out of the inning is a line drive right to Adolis Garcia. 1-0, and there's a high drive, well hit to right field, going back is Adolis Garcia, and he makes the catch. Seven putouts for Adolis, who lobs the ball up to a fan wearing a Rangers blue jersey in the first row in right field. What else can this man do tonight? No runs, a hit to left after eight. The Rangers lead the Astros 11-3. to three. And when he gets the ball, he turns around, looks up in the stands, finds a Rangers fan, flips him the ALCS ball. Man, I'm really glad that you said that because I felt like it was mostly Rangers fans in Game 5 of the World Series against Arizona. That was like... You are going into a legit hostile yes. environment for Game 7 of Houston. These are two teams that do not like each other. It's a winner-take-all game to move on to the World Series. In Game 5 of the World Series, I felt like there were tons of Rangers fans there ready to party. And we indeed did get the opportunity to party because Altuve hit an irrelevant home run. Good for you, buddy. But there's two outs. <laughs> it's 11 to 4. It was a good for you, buddy. Yeah, moment, right? Have fun, you. man. Yeah, yeah neat. Yeah, awesome. Go pad your stats while you're sitting at home for Especially the rest of the playoffs. Especially as all your Astros fans are missing from the stadium oh, at this point because there's nobody there anymore. They're gone because this turned into total domination, which leads us. And the Astros are down to their final strike. With Clerk ready now. One, two pitch. Ground ball. Second base. Simeon's got it. On to first to Nate Lowe. And hello, World Series. The Rangers have won their third American League pennant. They stream out of the dugout and are jumping up and down between the mound and first base. For the first time since 2011, the Rangers are going to the World Series after having six consecutive losing seasons. What an amazing year this has been. 
and there's more baseball to be played. The Rangers win. 11-4. to They're going to the World Series. Third time in franchise history. What's your freakout factor at this point? Even though most of the game, it's looking like this is the direction we're going. The Rangers are going to win. They're going to go to the World Series. How, how do you react? How do you celebrate when you get the last out? I I could, had told Mike all week leading up to it, and the week before that too. I was like, I just can't lose to Houston, and like that losing to Houston would be the the toughest part of this, the whole process, the whole journey for this. Losing to them would have been the worst. So beating them felt like winning a World Series in my mind. It really did. Uh, but then I was like, hold on. And again, Mike, you look at that. It was fifteen hits, eleven runs, no errors versus twelve hits, four runs. Houston couldn't convert against the Rangers pitching. The Rangers definitely converted. I was feeling like we're going to win the World Series because this lineup produces runs. I was just so pumped up because I never saw this coming. I didn't see it coming after they lost to Seattle on that Sunday. I didn't see it happening, you know, after beating Tampa Bay. I was struggling, even though I did pick the Rangers to win in seven games against the Houston Astros, it was really tough to see, even after beating the Baltimore Orioles and sweeping them in three, that you were going to win a series against the Houston Astros because you think about early September in Arlington and just getting destroyed three games in a row. So then to be celebrating in Houston and not even winning a home game in the series was just yeah, unbelievable is, I guess, the best word to describe something you just didn't see happening. Yeah, I still go back to, I think it was Dubon that said to A-Rod or Jeter at some point in a pregame interview, they were asking, why do you guys struggle at home? And he admitted, he was like, I, we, we're having a hard time with our batter's eye. Our own stadium, we're having a hard time with. I That other part of it just gave me so much more confidence, and I was like, that was the moment right there. They couldn't see. Dude, how... <laughs> How how do you feel though? I mean, as a lifelong Rangers fan, just like us, I I felt so excited. Not only because they won, but I couldn't help but like looking ahead. And I'm like, it looks it's gonna be Arizona, or yeah. you know. And I'm thinking, we're we should be the favorites yes. in this. And you have taken and but it was weird because they've been the underdog in every series. Underdog against Tampa, underdog against Baltimore, huge underdog against Houston. I just couldn't believe they had come back. After they won the first two games of the series, I was like so ready to party on all of this. And then the way you lose game five, but also you games three and four at home that I thought like, this is where we're going to put the series away. I, I was so excited, but then immediately I was kind of, it's almost like a hockey thing where you win the Western Conference if you're the stars and you're like, I don't want, I've, I've seen that trophy. <laughs> I'll wait for the Stanley Cup. So I was so freaking pumped, but now it's like, we got to finish it. Yeah. We can finish it. I think the to, to add to that part of it, Kevin, though, was once I realized we get more Rangers baseball. Now, at the end of the True. season, we did not want any more Rangers baseball because they didn't. They were not playing well. Once we got to game five, oh, oh <laughs> what's, the end of the regular season, for yeah, sure, for but sure, But once sure. the playoffs did their thing and you saw that, they were playing at their best. And so... Uh, Mike, you get to see the best baseball happening, and you're watching your team do it. That's where I was like, I'm excited not only because it's the World Series, but we're watching this team at their best right now playing more baseball. Just give me more of it. I I just wanted more of what they were doing. Isn't it surprising how you played your best in April and May, maybe didn't play your best for four months? And then all of a sudden in October, you play the best baseball you could possibly play against the best teams. Yeah, yeah, and you and and took them down along the way. And then Kevin, I think the thing that kind of stamps it all for us, and we still haven't had a, a chance as DFW fans to celebrate a championship on our home field, but winning in Houston on their home field in their face, that was a moment that like. Watching our guys celebrate in Houston was awesome. You're definitely right about that. And then this wasn't as big, but this is another thing I took out of it. Because, like, we're getting ready for the first series with the Astros starting tomorrow right here on the fan. Shameless plug alert. It feels like a real rivalry again. Not because, oh, yes. because you know, like, you can have a rivalry based on proximity or hatred or whatever. But the other thing that makes a rivalry is, like, is it actually competitive 
and you looked at multiple years where you could call this a rivalry, but if you're the Astros and you were looking at the Rangers and you're like, how? Because you like us defeating you and destroying you. And as Mike brought up, just a month earlier, you saw them wipe the floor with you on your own field. And so that is a, one, another thing that I loved is you can go into the series against the Astros. You can, you're the defending world champions, but you can also be like, don't forget who I beat on my next to last stop. Yeah. No. And, you know, we talk about that with the Mavericks, right? Where we're like, everybody's like, oh, they, they took down, they had Kevin Durant and all of them before they were the, any good. They had Kobe on his last leg. The, the big three wasn't good enough yet. And you're like, and that was a great run. I don't know what you're talking about. Look at the names that you're talking about. And then, as you just pointed out, they did have a Baltimore team that was on the rise, yes. ready to get there. They did have a Tampa team that was just as good as you, and Houston team that was your uh, your biggest nemesis the entire way. And that during the regular season, Houston did get the boot, but ultimately the Rangers got the belt as Road Warriors. What was that thing oh, that they had? Oh, R-O-A-D? Gosh. Yeah, R-O-A-D. It was the, the Rays, the Orioles, the Astros, and then the Diamondbacks to ultimately get the big prize. Mike, your uh, final thoughts on what surely will go down as one of the most glorious games in Texas Rangers history. It's the greatest baseball ride I've ever been on as a fan, and I want to do it again. Corey, that sounds like something Dude. you would say or Bochi's granddaughter would say, right? You know, last 36 hours, you know, I've been asked, hey, does this ever get old? It doesn't get old, trust me, no. Not when you get to watch these guys with their deep determination, their resilience, and the heart that brought them together and play as one to do what they did. These guys put aside their individual action to become collective power to win a world championship here with the Texas Rangers for the first time in our franchise. So i like to thank them. You know, and i tell you, years from now, I, I, I'm going to think about this moment and I'm going to cherish the time that I had to spend with them. You know, we talked about spring training. We're going to do something special. But, fellas, we did something special here together. Thank you. I can't thank them enough. The last thing I want to end on, my granddaughter Maddie was on, she's on the parade. We're done with the parade. She goes, Papa, I want to do that again. I'm with her. I want to do this again. Let's go.